official religious uh, heritage uh, by the Daesh. I will just take the opportunity to um, uh, reply to uh, what uh, Nikos, not reply, but just make, uh, make a few comments about that. Uh, the Mount Athos is also very important for the Ottoman history. And I know that uh, many monasteries are full of treasuries of Ottoman archives, documents, and other things that haven't been explored entirely to the best of my knowledge. And I also know um, uh, the Turkish uh, Byzantine historian that uh, in some monasteries, uh, including uh, Xeropotamu, ho the holy service is being performed for the soul of Ottoman sultans, namely uh, Selim I, who has been the rebuilder of the monastery. Normal. That, that's very normal. And I heard uh, similar things in northern Greece by uh, the members of the clergy and uh, some other people, which shows that how cultures are intermingled, and from a cultural viewpoint and from a religious viewpoint, it shows that we can uh, respect and love each other, not only in this life, but also in the afterlife and pray for the soul of somebody belonging to another religion, as we do. Well, this is a very <laughs> short comment about uh, the Mount Athos. And uh, coming back to the, uh, to the subject that I will uh, be talking about uh, shortly, it's the, the how to understand the destruction of uh, uh, the historical heritage, especially the religious heritage, by the Daesh in Iraq and uh, in, in Syria. Needless to remind you what is going on and what has uh, been uh, performed by the Daesh. They destroyed uh, all the remnants of ancient civilizations, starting from the early Sumerian, Babylonian, Assyrian uh, ruins and artifacts, and coming back uh, to uh, earlier, uh, to later periods. And uh, they also destroyed mosques, the decoration of the mosques, all the artifacts that were uh, embellishing this beautiful mosque under the pretext then it was un-Islamic and against the, the spirit of the prayer. But the, I think the, the, the most interesting uh, thing is to, uh, to, to try to understand why they destroyed all this uh, pre-Islamic and pre-Christian, uh, pre-monotheistic, let's say, uh, heritage. Needless to say, they also destroyed, uh, they, they made horrible destruction uh, of the churches and all the religious objects that were located uh, in the churches. I, I have the, more or less full list of the, uh, of the destruction. But starting from the ancient uh, civilization, the, uh, the ratio given by the Daesh, and you know that they have uh, very active uh, periodicals on the internet and they give you uh, very accurate, updated information about what they are doing. They claim that all these objects, namely the, the, the statues, are idols that have uh, served to, uh, to perform idolatry by the ancient peoples. So uh, they constitute by excellence, uh, par excellence, uh, a, a, a challenge to the monotheism. So they have to be destroyed because they, uh, the, the Daesh links this, connect this uh, uh, artifacts with the concept of the mortal sin of uh, idolatry in Islam, which is called shirk uh, in Arabic, and which literally means association, to, to associate a divinity to God, to one, to unique God. So uh, every Muslim has to make a uh, genuine effort to destroy idolatry. So if you discover any artifacts or statues that have been used for the purpose of idolatry, you have to destroy them. So this is an ethical must. I'm talking by, from the mouth of the, uh, of the Daesh. So this is their uh, reason to destroy all these things. The problem is that, one of the problems is that, at the same time, while they are destroying all those things, they are also smuggling and selling uh, all the things they have discovered in the uh, in the museums or just stolen from the from the field, and uh, you can buy them from the black market all around the world, especially in in, in Europe, in the uh, in the United States, and it's no state secret that these things are being smuggled through Turkey. Some of them, many of them, are smuggled uh, through Turkey. And uh, it's very interesting because we are facing a very frequent case of conflict between a pure, rigid ideology with uh, intransigent uh, requirements and the realities of life. Realities, they have to buy weapons. Weapons are very expensive. And to, uh, to finance uh, weapons, they have to sell something uh, that is 
at least it's as much as expensive uh, as the weapons, so uh, archaeology. But they are so smart that they can, uh, how can I say, translate or ad uh, adapt their this policy into Islamic terms. For instance, when they are uh, allowing uh, the black market, the, the mafia uh, leaders to make uh, illegal excavations in the field and smuggle uh, the archaeological artifacts, they impose the one-fifth uh, Islamic taxation of homes. So apparently everything is, uh, the facade is saved and the, this has an appearance of uh, being an, uh, let's say, legal uh, act. Um, let's try to understand the, the, the Daesh viewpoint from an uh, Islamic uh, perspective, not, not entering into the details of the Islamic theology, but just studying the, the whole scriptures, the Quran. So they are destroying the archaeological heritage, including the religious one. In the Quran, I'm no theologian, but I'm a jurist, and you know that jurists are meddling into everything, and they uh, allow yeah, themselves that's, to... That's the problem. To, that's the problem. So, in the Quran, I localized and identified at least seven uh, places, seven, more than seven verses, but seven surahs, seven chapters, where the text invites Muslims uh, to contemplate the ruins or the rests or the remnants of ancient nations and to take lessons from them. At least seven verses are mentioning this with different uh, aspects and different uh, discourse, but the idea is that uh, before uh, the seventh century when the, when the Islam was revealed to our, uh, according to our belief, many civilizations made beautiful things, great monuments, etc., but because of their uh, mistakes or immorality or the, the, their sins committed against God, they were destroyed. But this doesn't exclude the fact that they made beautiful things. And we have to take lessons from that and try to understand what went on in, uh, in ancient history. So I have a grief against the Daesh uh, because they are preventing m me from performing my duty. The Quran tells me to contemplate ancient civilizations and their ruins. I can't because they did this. Uh, and, uh, apart from that, well, the, uh, the Daesh proclaims to be a very rigid Sunni uh, organization. Well, again, I'm not a theologian, but to the best of my knowledge, in the Sunni reasoning, legal reasoning, you have to imitate the prophet, and you also have to imitate his friends, his uh, close friends who were in uh, continuous touch with him in uh, religious terms. Well. Uh, most of the areas uh, which are now under the control of the Daesh have been conquered by the Islamic, the early Islamic state, uh, where the early Islamic armies and the, most of the commanders were friends of the Prophet. They knew him and they followed him, his, uh, his way of life. They had no idea of destroying such things. I mean, the, I'm sure that, I'm not archaeologist, but I'm sure that some historical uh, monuments have been uh, recycled uh, it's, as it's the case for all civilizations, but I don't know any case of deliberate, purposely destruction of ancient monuments by the early Islamic State in the 7th, 8th century. Uh, it's also the case with the other Islamic powers that control these areas, the Umayyads, the Abbasids, the Seljukids, the Mamluks, and finally the Ottomans who had no idea of destroying the archaeological uh, uh, heritage in the name of religion. Uh, focusing on the Ottoman policy about archaeology, I would say that it's diametrically the opposite of the Daesh. Because the, in the 19th century, not only the Ottoman uh, sultans, who also detained the, the center of the Islamic Caliphate, not only they didn't destroy archaeological uh, heritage, but they financed encouraged archaeological excavations in the area. And the beautiful archaeological museum uh, that you can uh, visit, it's a few steps by the tram, has been built under the reign of Abdul Hamid II, who was very well known for his pan-Islamist policy and also being a very pious person himself. So it didn't prevent him to finance an archaeological museum. Well, he financed some of it, and the, the other part was financed by the archaeologist Osman Hamdi Bey. But anyway, the museum was built under his reign, and uh, he was proud of showing it to his uh, friends from uh, Europe. The same museum in another section 
contains one of the uh, most uh, important collections of pre-Islamic uh, Arab inscriptions, epigraphies, and also idols. So again, all these things have been uh, discovered either by uh, foreign archaeologists under the Ottoman rule and headed to, to the uh, Ottoman Museum or directly found by Ottoman archaeologists. So all these things are related to paganism, idolatry, and etc. because they are pre-Islamic um, artifacts. And uh, let's have some, um, some some fantasy about what can be uh, what can happen when uh, ISIS, uh, the, 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 the Daesh, is exporting or smuggling all these artifacts in uh, in the world. Before the plundering, they remained peacefully in the uh, in the museums or in open air, and they were just visited by the. And it starts with the discovery of an Assyrian demon, Pazuzu in an excavation field in northern Iraq. And then you know the rest of the story. It goes to the United States and a, a Satanist sect uh, is inspired about it and etc. So everything is possible. I know that it's a little bit uh, not, not very convincing, but such things are possible. Continuing again with um, the, uh, the approach of uh, the uh, of the Daesh regarding the archaeological and also other religious uh, objects, uh, artifacts. Well, let me remind that one of their uh, periodicals on internet is called Constantinia. The, the name of Istanbul, which is in between Greek and Turkish. I mean, Constantinopolis became Constantinia in, in Arabic, and this was the official name under the Ottoman Empire. And this periodical shows clearly the, the ambition of the Daesh to conquer Istanbul and to set up the, the, the seat of the uh, caliphate in the, the new caliphate in, uh, in Istanbul. And I'm pretty sure that they're also dreaming of plundering all the endless uh, art uh, treasures uh, exhibited in Istanbul museums and uh, other places. They will be probably very surprised to discover at least two artifacts. The first one is the probably the, the unique, the only statue of any Muslim caliph in the history of Islam is the statue of Sultan Abdelaziz that you can see at the Palace of Beylerbury on the uh, Asian side. So this is a caliph, uh, the Ottoman Sultan, who invited a French sculptor to perform his statue. And this was no shock for any, any people, religious authorities or whatever. This happened probably in the years 1870s. So, this statue may be very, very valuable for, uh, for selling to the black market. The second artifact is even more interesting, to, to my understanding. Uh, this is a painting that is now, since a couple of years, ex exhibited uh, at the Palace of Dolmabahce. Uh, the name of the painting is Women in the Harem. So this is a huge painting representing women uh, around a pool uh, in the Harem. The painter is the last caliph Abdul Majid, not the last sultan, because the caliphate uh, survived for two years after the abolition of the uh, monarchy uh, between 1922 and 1924. The, the painter is the caliph. And to compare the, 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 the dresses of the two artifacts, I can say that uh, the statue, the, the sultan Abdul Aziz, is wearing his official uniform plus a raincoat, and the ladies on the painting wear nothing. <laughs> So this, I think, explains the transition and the, what, what, the mentality, the set of mind of uh, the distraction and how, uh, I mean, all this artistic tradition can be vandalized in the name of what I would call the counter-tradition, an anti-tradition. This will be my humble 